How to beat the system. Most people, most people spend their entire lifetime trying to beat the system. To beat the system, you first have to understand the system. The system of life and the system of society. First, the system of life needs to be understood through the human life span. You are born and you die. On average, the lifespan of a human is 80 years. From ages 1 to 25, your first quarter of your life, you are pretty much going to be looked after by your parents, by the school system, by society. Once you become 25 to 65, that is the heart of your life. That is the main years where you have the maximum energy, maximum health, maximum capacity to do some great things with your life. They can still be done after 65 and you can still do things before 25, but we're talking averages. To understand the system of life, you have to understand averages. And then you have to understand there's some people who are above average, some below average. And then from 65 to 80 is the coast down, is when you prepare for the next life or you just, you know, you mosey along, you do some things that you want to do, you, you travel, you retire. So the system of life is a time span and how you use your time and a buildup a build up in your youth to do something with the heart of your life. And then towards the end of your life, you may want to pass on wisdom. You may want to enjoy your, your years as best you can, but it's understanding that timetable and it's understanding that the heart of your life is in the middle of your life and that's your peak. And then you coast down. And then you also have to understand the system of society. I'll, articulate a little bit the system of the American society. It will apply to most modern societies and every system is kind of unique within itself, but the American system is pretty much based on, well, it's a capitalist system, which means it's, it's about companies operating for profit. That's not an evil thing, but that's the incentive. The incentive is very much centered around entrepreneurship, very much uh, steered by corporations, very much a system where the dollar money is used to, in, to in, encourage people, to incentivize people to do certain things. And the system is structured for the average person, for the masses. Most systems, doesn't matter what system, doesn't matter what you call it, doesn't matter how it's structured, most systems are structured around how do we keep the masses in order, because the opposite of order is chaos, and how do we overall keep society functioning? Don't look at the system as an evil thing, because today, as I make this in 2019, we're better than we were 100 years ago. We're better, definitely better than we were 200, 300 years ago. So the system is not bad. We are actually in the best time. If you look, if you study human society and the quality of life in today's age and the ability to do some great creative things, we're in a great time, guys. Great time. Hey, guys, some of you psychopaths, you know, 75 years ago, if you had mental issues, you know what they would do? They would take you to a mental insane asylum and they would drill holes through your head so the demons could escape. So all you psychopaths who are making a full-time career as a troll on YouTube, back in the day, they would drag your ass to a mental institution and drill holes through your skull. So, hey, you guys are winning, all right? You guys are doing better. But the system is to kind of keep order, okay? Any system, it's a structure. System equals structure. Structure equals let's create order because the opposite of order is chaos. A system is not evil. A system is based on order. And so you go to school to learn some general subjects, 
general subjects, math, history, uh, all these different things, but you're never really taught to think about who created the textbooks and what perspective is it coming from. Like we, are, we learned many years ago that a lot of the history books that were taught in America for years, they were slanted in their perspective because it was, it's all about who writes them and who presents them. Just like the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, it's all about who, who wrote those things, who put them together, and what perspective are they being teached. Because you can skew any subject based on however you want, okay, to control the masses. Not bad, but it's something to be mindful of in your studying. Always look at who wrote it, who put it together, and why was it packaged and presented like this? What alternative motive did, does society have? And so you go to school and you're taught subjects, all these different subjects, math, history, science, they're fine, they're general subjects of life, but you will not use 90 to, you won't use about 90% of the stuff you learn in school, you won't use it. It's basically just given to you so that you can understand that you have to learn not to lose it. And you have to learn that you don't get ahead by trying to totally buck the system. Like if you want to be a rebel and say, look, school's for suckers. I'm going to ditch school. I'm going to do this. There's some abnormal cases that may be able to do that. But most people, if you try to buck the system, you're going to hurt yourself, not the system. You're going to look foolish. You're going to be on YouTube saying, Alex Jones, great job. You're, you're, you're exposing America, but you're living in poverty. Okay. And Alex Jones has been divorced and he's making a million dollars off selling you vitamins. So you may, you get ahead and you beat the system by understanding the system. The system is not necessarily evil. Sometimes it is, but mainly the system is just to create order and it's to appeal to the masses. Okay. Because the masses aren't necessarily looking to do some unique creative things. They're looking to just find some something to do. Most people just need something to do and plug along at life. Okay. Most people don't do good with a lot of free time. So society and school system is basically structured so that people realize you have to kind of behave for eight hours a day or whatever and work within the system to do some type of function in society that helps society, okay? Whatever it is, scientist, plumber, whatever. But what they don't teach you is what's the next level? What's the whole purpose of going to work? Now, for the system, the purpose of going to work is to keep you in order, okay? To And to have a function in society so society keeps moving forward. But the driver, the incentive is the money, the monetary policy. And currently, we, we print money. I believe in 1971, we went away from the gold standard, meaning it used to be for every dollar bill, there was a piece of gold supposedly somewhere in a bank that backed up that dollar bill. And the dollar bill was basically like an IOU. And most other countries have the same type of formula, most developed countries. And so after 1971, we just created basically a, a, a debt. We allowed debt and we allowed the dollar to not be backed necessarily by gold. Is that a bad thing? No. Why? Because it helps us to grow faster. Eventually, there'll probably be a day to pay and the system will reset. No system lasts forever. Make another mental note. No system lasts forever. doesn't matter how good the system. Because basically, American capitalism is a game of monopoly. And eventually, what monopoly, either one person or a group of people control the board and then it has to be reset again. Now, here's make another mental note though. There's always going to be 10% of people that don't have the mental capacity to, even, if, even when the game resets, they're always going to be not able to function in the system. There's 10% of society that aren't, they're not less than society, but they don't have the mental capacity. They're just born a certain way. And I, I believe that after studying, I believe that's why Jesus said, they're always going to be the poor among you. Uh, because... There's, there's certain people that, like, I mean, I read some comments, like, on YouTube, or I talk to people, and you could tell they're, they're just, they don't have it. And, and it's not that you're better than them. It's just some people don't have that mental capacity to, to be able to function at a high level. So society will always have to either put some programs in to look after them, or some societies just totally leave them destitute, and that's where you got to be careful. So you're always going to have 10% that are there, and then you're always going to have 10% that 
they were just born with a very high computer processor in their skull. They're very good at solving problems, okay? And then so 10% on the top, 10% on the bottom, and the masses are the 80% in the middle. Now, some of the 80% in the middle, they go on, they, they live an above average life. Some of them, you know, take a big hit, they go back down. But for the most part, the average is they wash in the middle, okay? And so why do we have a system? Because we have to keep the masses in order. Because you always got to have the 10% stragglers. You always got to have the 10% rocket scientists. So you have to figure out some type of order to create the masses, the herd, the cattle going in a positive direction. And again, the system is not evil because we're better than we were 100 years ago when we were tending farms, when we had no electricity, we had no, uh, you know, modern day science. Again, you know, some of you psychopaths, if you had a mental problem, you would either be diagnosed as you're a demon or they would drill a, he a hole through your skull. So do not look at the system like it's evil. Look at it as you want to understand it, okay? And you may not have to agree with it, but you want to understand it because that's how you beat the system, okay? You don't beat the system by a stock tip. You know, even though you could get rich off stocks, you could win the lottery, you could do a successful career. Beating the system is not just about gaining money. Okay. It's about understanding life. Okay. And the first thing you do when you understand life to beat the system is you understand you have a certain amount of time in this lifetime. In this world, you have about 80 years on average. I know people that died in their twenties. I know people who live way older than 80, but on average, you're living the 80, 80, 80 year lifespan. So basically after you understand that it's all about, okay, that's what this life is. Nothing is permanent. How do I want to live? And how can I thrive in a system that I'm in? Uh, because the system is structured to keep the masses doing productive things in society and to develop society and to create a, a better society. And on average, we have done that. Okay, Even with creating debt and all these different things that we have done. But we have to understand that if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you can be a slave to the system. And I always use the word slave with a uh, hesitation, okay? Because 100 years ago, 200 years ago, there were actual physical slaves, which was, again, a complete disgrace to humanity, okay? So again, we're better than we were 100, 200 years ago, guys, okay? So don't get so negative that you can't see beyond the fact of human history. So now, what? how you become a slave to the system is that you, you don't, recognize that there is a system. You don't have a fair mind to understand that it's not necessarily evil. It just is what it is. Now, how do I not just find a place in the system, but how do I thrive in the system? So I think first you have to understand what do you need to do to survive in the system? We talked about that last night. There's a difference between surviving and thriving, but to beat the system, first you need to learn what you need to do to survive. Okay. Cause that's step one. So step one is any job you get, whether you're a scientist, plumber, janitor, it's all based on a system of when you do a job, you get a financial reward, okay? And so the end game, when you, when you go to buy a house, when you go to buy a car, when you do anything in life that requires either a loan or some type of insurance even, they want to know about your financial records, no mortgage company, no loan, no auto loan, no car insurance, no institution that's going to play a part in your finances wants to know about your college degree. They don't want to know about your grades in high school. They don't want to know that you were president of the chess club. They want to know about, they want to see the last three months of your account statements. When you go to see a bank, when you go to get a loan on a property, when you go take out a loan on a business, uh, when you do anything in life, bankers, loan officers, and the system, they want to know how you handle money. They do not care if your, your IQ is high. They do not care if you're charismatic. They don't care if you have a good business plan. They care about your last three months of your financial statements, what your monthly budget is, okay, and uh, what your credit score is. These are all indicators on if we give this person money or, you know, if we give this person money, what's their track record in the system, okay? 
Because the whole system is based around money. Why is it money? Not because it's evil, because that's what gives people incentive to do more. If there was no such thing as money and everyone kind of just did what they want, society wouldn't function. And that's why, again, the system isn't evil. Who would go to work? You know, who would create buildings? Who would uh, work at Starbucks? Uh, who would be nurses? Who would be doctors? Uh, who would be Uber drivers? Uh, who would be anybody? There would be no one functioning in society if there wasn't a reward system. And the reward system is some type of money that you can use to get things you want and need. Okay. And the whole way you beat the system is you're able to accumulate some type of money, currency, whatever you're going to call it, that you're able to meet your needs and then also have some wants. And some people want more things than others. So some people go after a lot of money. Some people want just enough to survive. And some people, you know, there's a balance, there's a range. But money and how you handle money is the evaluation of how you're going to be able to beat the system. Now, there's many philosophies on money. There's, there's some entrepreneurs that I watch that say, you know, you never want to keep cash or you never want to have debt because debt is dumb. Now, for the masses, I think that's true. And even for me, I mean, I kind of apply to that. Okay. Now, for some people like the Donald Trumps, the certain people in society, they use debt as leverage and to cover themselves because they're not using money in their own name. They're creating entities. They're creating corporations, LLCs. And what they do is they leverage that debt. And if things really go sour, they just claim bankruptcy and then they restart because the debt is in not their personal name. It's in an entity name, a corporation, a company. And that's the system. That's how the system uses debt. A bank, a bank, when they give you a loan, they do not loan you what they have in a safe, okay? When you deposit $100 in a bank, the bank is only required to keep $20 of that 100 So you, most bank regulations are, they only have to keep 20% reserves based on what people actually deposit. If everyone went to withdraw 100% of the money they had in the bank, the system would collapse because the system is based on debt. And the reason the system is based on debt because they have to print more money to let society grow faster. It's not just the government, it's the central banks. The central banks and the banking system is every time they give a loan, every time a mortgage is given, money is created, okay? Because a bank is not lending money they have, they, are, they can lend up to like, you know, nine times, 10 times what they have on their books and they're getting an, uh, an interest rate on it, okay? So, but what that does is that creates construction jobs. So people build homes, People move in homes, they buy stuff. So it keeps society just going. So again, it's not bad, but society is based on how can we keep creating, building, developing, reward people for it, but also keep a level of structure where many people get caught in the system where if you just follow the system and you're not somewhat enlightened on how the system works, you will be... Um, I don't want to say a slave to the system because, again, I always use that word lightly, but you'll just be a, a cog in the wheel. You won't really live a unique, creative life because you're just going to be plugging along. And some people just want to plug along. And I can't cover everything in the system. This is just some general things. You have to always do your own research. But you're very slowly indoctrinated into the system. The first way you're indoctrinated is you go to school and you read books and you're taught this is 100% fact. This is what you believe, just like a church. You, the Bible is from God, but the Bible isn't from God, okay? There was really no Bible put together before men under pressure by the government put it together and it was all written by men. There was no women written it. So for years, people and the Quran and all these different things, a lot of them are just books or a book that someone put together for a purpose and all of a sudden it's a religion, it's from God. Now, it, it can have some things that truly enlighten you and change your life, which some of it did for me. And it, and it is like a spiritual thing. It's like a God awakening. But you have to understand what it is, okay, in its context. Just like when you read a science book, uh, an, uh, a mathematical formula. It's, it's, it's good. It's information, but it is what it is, okay? It's part of life. And so the system is saying, all right, Here's some general subjects you need to learn. And then what really society did a lot of people wrong too is now 
the first chance they get you is on college loans, okay? College loans is another opportunity for you to accumulate debt. It's your first opportunity really as an adult, okay? And every time there's a loan given, the banks print money, okay? Not the government. The government may back up the loan, and that's why student loans aren't able to be bankrupt, okay? So like Donald Trump can leverage, or any real estate mogul, they can leverage, they can buy a bunch of apartment buildings, they can take loans on them, and they can... And if something goes wrong, they can go bankrupt because it's in an entity, okay? It's not in their name. It's in the Trump Corporation or whatever corporation. If you take out a college loan, uh, it, whether it's under your name or your parents' name, it can never be bankrupt, okay? It's not, there's some debt that you can't bankrupt. Now, medical bills, they can be bankrupt. And that's why there's some debate on, uh, you know, how much you, universal health care you want to do. But when you go bankrupt, you're basically wiping out debt. Now, you're taking a... a a hit on that because it can seriously hurt you from ever being able to get debt or ever being able to do certain things within the system. Because again, anytime you go to the system for a loan or for some type of an advancement, they're looking on how you handled money. And if we print money to give you, because we want society to grow, do you have the ability, do you have the track record to pay us back? Because we want an interest. And if it's, you know, that that's what it is. I mean, they want it to function in society. They want to get a return on it. And, you know, that's all proportionary. So again, you always have to learn. The first thing you have to learn is when you become an adult, the system is looking at your banking records, not your school records. Because the system is based on, we want to put the money in the hands of people who understand the system and who can work the system for the purpose of creating order in society and developing a society. There's crooks on every side and in between. And for most people, they're not really looking to beat the system. They don't want to be trampled over by the system. They just want to have a decent life. They want to raise their children. They want to be healthy and they want to be happy. So again, there's the masses. There's the people that want to beat the system. And then there's the people that the system always has to help. And it's not because they're evil. It's because, look, there's some people that just mentally don't have it up there. Or they don't have the energy. They don't have whatever. So the system is like this abstract conglocation or just this abstract drawing of people, psychology, math, science, etc. It's it's like this abstract drawing that powers to be have to put some structure to the drawing in order to keep society going forward. And we again we have gone forward because if you're looking at where the system is today versus 100 200 years ago If you look at the condition of humans, again, especially in America, but I would say overall in the world, in most areas, we've gone forward. Okay, so be mindful that as soon as you get out of high school, education is good. Whether you go, sometimes college, sometimes to trade school, I went more to the trades. But whatever you do, You have to watch the accumulation of debt because debt will keep you entrapped in the system. And it will, the people who are beating the system are giving you the money to be in debt. Now, again, some debt could be good if you really got to a certain level. But at a basic level, you want to keep your debt to income ratios low. And you want to understand that your ability to, to, to understand money, to understand the system, at least at a basic level, to understand your budget, okay? And to understand that you want to operate in a surplus. You want to understand your income. You want to understand, you want to understand your expenses. And at the end of each month, are you making money or losing money? Because when you go to a bank, when you go to buy a house, when you go to buy a car, when you go to get insurance, many times they're looking at that. They're looking at how do you manage and are you in a surplus or deficit? And that determines how far you'll go in the system. You know, they're not real, they don't really teach financial education. And I'm just touching on some basic things here, guys. But you gotta do your own research. That's also how do you beat the system? You don't beat the system by being cynical. You don't beat the system by thinking you're smarter than everyone. You don't beat the system by saying the system is evil. You want to understand it. You want to understand the laws, the tax laws. 
You want to understand, you know, business entities. You want to understand psychology. Okay. Uh, you know, because a big part of life is not just the tax laws. It's not just um, corporations. It's psychology. And many corporations, companies, they study psychology in order to keep people entrapped in the system. Okay. Example, I, when I was working construction, there was, there's a store, there's a, a food market store up north called Wegmans. It's like a Whole Foods, a high-end food store. And I remember during the construction period, the painters came in, Minnie Van Murph. Thank you, brother, for the super chat and, and show of appreciation, brother. I appreciate the positive uh, message. Hope everyone's listening. Thank you, man. Thank you, Minnie Van Murph. I was building... Um, I was doing electrical work. We were building a Wegman supermarket. And we were at the point in construction where all the painters were coming in to paint the supermarket. And they were painting it like the color of Thanksgiving, like oranges and browns. And one of the foremen said to me, Sam, do you know why they're painting it this color? I didn't even think about it. I didn't think about the paint color. I mean, I was what, in my early 20s, so I'm not real. I didn't really understand the system. In your early 20s, you still not, you know, I graduated high school because I knew I hated high school. I hated sitting in a classroom for an hour. I thought it was all a scam. But even at a young level, I always knew, look, this is part of the system. And there's a certain time when you want to buck the system, but there's a certain time where you just want to play the game. Okay. So I said, let me get my uh, high school degree. Let me play the game and get the hell out of here. So I got out of high school and then I started in the trades. And so for me, I wasn't on any, I wasn't looking at paint colors. I wasn't thinking about like a deeper psychology of the system. I was just trying to get a paycheck to buy stuff. Cause to me, that was what success is. You get paid, you get more money and you can go buy nicer stuff. And most people that masses, that's how they think. So we're working and, and the painters come in, they're painting uh, the supermarket, like brown, orange, the color of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a holiday in America, and it's basically just based around food, etc. There's a whole other meaning behind it, but just stay with me. So, <clears throat> the foreman says, Sam, do you know why they're painting it these colors? I said, I got no idea. I wasn't even paying attention. And he goes, they're doing it because they've actually spent about a million dollars in research, in researching human psychology, in what colors make people the most hungry. So this company, uh, Wegmans, they spent, you know, supposedly a million dollars in doing studies and polls with people to try to understand what colors make people most hungry. And what they found is the colors of Thanksgiving make people the most hungry. And probably because at least in America, psychologically, they associate that with the gathering time of their friends and family and eating of food. And many things within the system are not based on math. They're based on psychology, okay? Emotional buying. When you go to the supermarket and there's like candy and stuff in the front aisle, it's all about the emotional buy. I was in Starbucks and there was some young hot girl working behind the counter. And she goes, I have to stay away from one of my friends because every time I go to the store with her, I just end up buying stuff. I don't know why, but I'm just drawn to buy stuff. It's psychology. You know, many stores, it's not by accident where they place items. Whether it's a supermarket, a clothing store, a sneaker store, doesn't matter. Where items are placed and how they are presented plays a big part in psychology. How the human mind and how the human emotion works is a big part of how people beat the system. Because you have to understand that in life there's science, which is data, the studying of data, forming a conclusion, and there's the psychology and the art, meaning how the mind processes information, how the mind makes decisions. Some of the mind makes decisions based on mathematical equations. Some of the mind makes decisions based on emotion. And so for a big percentage of the population, it's an emotional buy. It's an emotional life. And so to beat the system, you almost have to understand your emotions and why you feel a certain way. And you almost have to be your own therapist. And you almost have to say, 
is should I be doing this or should I not? And you almost have to have an out-of-body experience. Like mathematically, it doesn't make sense, but my emotions are saying one thing. There's even a scripture that says the most deceptive thing is the human heart, which basically means your human emotions is one of the most deceptive things. I believe in that. I believe you have to have, you know, love, compassion, emotion. You don't want to be a robot. Okay. Even though I would like to marry a robot, but I wouldn't like to change her oil. So the system is based on playing to your emotions. And that's not bad, all right? Because if the system wasn't based on that, then again, we'd all be living a dull life with no emotions. But it's the control of your emotions. It's the understanding that you are in a society in which the, the powers to be are trying to create structure. And you have to try to figure out how to not get entrapped in that structure, whether it's through debt or other things, but at the same time, how to, how to navigate your way around so that you don't make too much chaos. Because if you make too much chaos, the system will collapse on you. You can change the system, but you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful and you have to take a calculated risk when you try to change the system. And most people who have changed the system have sacrificed their life for it. So be, make a note. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just be mindful. But again, the system, especially in today's society, is not necessarily evil. It just It's a system. So you're, you have to play the system without getting sucked into the system. And then you have to figure out the system is based on control structuring the masses, emotion, and developing society to a greater scale. And within that is many nuances that I can't talk about in one live feed, and I've already gone out longer than I like to go on my opening statement because I like to read all live comments, which we're going to do next. But in, in some general ways, I hope that the words I spoke, if anything else, just spark something in your mind to take a step back and look at the system. And what you're going to need to do to beat the system. Not necessarily to be a millionaire, but hey, if that's your goal, there's nothing wrong with that. But just to not become a, a entrapped in the system. Okay. And to understand that, don't look down upon people who just, their goal is to just have something to do, get by and live. And there's some people that are at the uh, uh, end of the system that... They don't have the mental capacity to even deal with a system. And, you know, they need to be in a very stable, secure environment because they're not good in society. And you got a certain amount of people who are on the top and they're thinking about how do we send people to Mars and all, but they're no, they're, they're not better than anyone. Okay. Cause you need emotional people too. I mean, you need, you need the whole spectrum. And in every system, you have manipulation. You have manipulation from the gr very greedy people who want to control not only a country, but the world. And you have manipulation from the very poor that just are want to want to say, hey, screw it. You know, if the rich people are doing it, I'm going to do it. There's, there's welfare that's manipulated with poverty, and there's corporate welfare that's manipulated with the elite. There's always going to be some people that manipulate the system. You're never going to get around it from the poor to the very richest. There's some people that just want to get by. And there's some people that they don't want anarchy. I don't want anarchy, guys. But you want to live life on, on your terms. And I believe in America, I, be, I still believe we're blessed to do that. I really do. I really do. Uh, America's not perfect. We have to continue to improve it. But I... I have to acknowledge that we're still fortunate and I'm thankful. And I know there's other countries in the world too that are blessed. So I don't, I'm not here to say that America is the only way because we don't, we don't just like when I travel in America, each state is different. And so if you travel the world, you know, different parts of the world, they're not, you know, nothing like the news portrays it. It's funny. Like sometimes like people say like, oh, I don't believe the news. They're all uh, like, you know, hyping stuff up. But as soon as the news like plays to what they like, they believe the news. Like they believe like Iran, you know, Iran's the devil. Okay. And like, you know, we can't let Iran do this. And maybe they are, but you know, you didn't believe the news when they say Obama was great or whatever. So it's all perspective. It's all perspective. Okay. So, and even politics and religion, a big part of it is just based on emotion. 
Like even like sometimes when I sprinkle in some things I say, that gets people worked up. Okay. And you have to get people worked up sometimes to do something. You know, if, if I just sit here on a board and I write mathematical equations, not too many people are going to be interested. The masses want to, they have to get excited about something. They have to see neon lights. Okay. Neon lights attract the masses like a fly. It's just, it gets people like, all right. Understand the system of life, the average lifespan of a human. That time, whether you're rich, poor, no matter what system you're in, capitalist, socialist, communism, doesn't matter, consumerism, you're going to die. No one beats father time. No one beats the system of time. I don't care who you are, no one beats father time. So beating the system is never going to mean you're immortal. The Egyptians tried to do it. And guess what, guys? If you ever go to a museum, and I've been to several, you're all you're going to see is a bunch of uh, like mummies wrapped up, and they never made it, guys. They never made it to what they wanted to do. And someone stole their gold. That's what happened. So that's the first thing you need to do to beat the system. You need to understand that you have a certain amount of time on this earth. You, you it's There's no exact, you know, you may die in two days. But on average, you're going to live about 80 years. Once you understand that, then you have a perspective of life. Then you have to look at the country you live in and how it's set up. It's set up to create a level of structure. Yes, there are powers to be. Yes, there are people that have controlled interest and in wanting to control the natural resources and money of society. But a big part of it is just to keep order because you never want chaos. Chaos is a complete disaster for everyone, rich, poor, everyone. And so you want to navigate the system, not getting trapped in it and figure out how you can thrive in it. And if you see a way that the system can be improved, then through knowing the system is how you change the system. You know, Jesus knew the scriptures and that's how he was able to change a religious mindset. Okay. Donald Trump, he understood the political landscape. Okay. He was going to Republican conventions all the way back in the 80s, if you look on YouTube. So he was studying the political system and how it worked, even though he wasn't a politician. You have to first understand the system before you can try to change it. It doesn't matter if you believe in him or believe in other people. It's not about that. It's about if you if you believe the system should be improved, you have to understand how it works. And you have to do some research on your own to see about the money incentives and how that psychologically plays a part. You know, money is nothing but paper money or digit, digits in your account. But I know for me personally, when I get digits Grow, go up in my account, I get excited and I, I get encouraged to keep doing that. So like I often say here, because I'm very direct with you guys, if YouTube paid nothing, I eventually would stop doing it. Money is an incentive psychologically to do stuff because it empowers you to do more stuff. That's how the system's set up. I guarantee you, I mean, if there was no money in the system, if there was no reward for people, why would you go the extra mile? So you have to have money. You have to have some type of reward system because that's what allows people and gives people the energy to create and to develop and to innovate. Okay. Now you want the system to be somewhat regulated because you want it to be somewhat fair. You don't want it to be over-regulated where you, know, you can't breathe. It's always the balance. You know, society and systems are always struggling for a balance. Okay. Sometimes you go very conservative, sometimes liberal, but usually you want some type of balance. And I do believe that there's a season of your life where you need to keep things real simple. Maybe not forever. Because many of the great people in life, they lived a very complex life and they took on a lot and they created a lot, whether it's an inventor, uh, 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 a political leader, a, a business leader. They let most of the people that have really done some great things, they've, they've lived a very complex life. But for me and how I beat the system and when I talk about how I want to beat the system is I want to live life more on my terms. And I believe as I live life more on my terms, I create better and I inspire better. And that helps society better.
but to live life on your terms and to be an asset to society, you're going to need to understand how society works and that if you're not conscious and if you're not aware and if you're not compassionate and if you're not a disciplinary, you have to be all those things, then you can easily just get caught in being a worker in the beehive. And there's nothing wrong with being a worker. I don't think you ever beat the system. Well, there's some people, there's exceptions. But I don't look down upon being a worker. I don't look down upon being a follower for a season of your life or maybe forever. As long as it's, you know, a worthy thing, is something that helps you. But these are just some general thoughts tonight, guys. I mean, there's so much that I want to share. I don't want to keep rambling, but it, this matters to me. It matters to me. You know, again, not because I, you know, I want... Well, I would like to be Scrooge McDuck. I would like to swim in a pool of money. But not... But more than that, I mean, I'm not swimming in a pool of money. What I'm swimming in now literally is a pool of sweat. I've been swimming in a pool of sweat for two years living in my car. That's, that's not Scrooge McDuck lifestyle, guys. But why, why am I doing that? I'm sacrificing to beat the system, to position my life, to live more on my terms. Because that's me beating the system. So people can say whatever they want. But for two and a half years, swimming in a pool of my sweat or freezing in my car in New Jersey. The whole purpose behind it is to beat the system. And when I look at a system, I, I'm trying to, I don't want to live on the system's terms. I don't want to bring chaos to the system, but I want to kind of navigate around it so that I can reposition my life within the system to live my best life. Okay. And to live a life, again, more on my terms, more in my way. That takes a conscious effort and it takes some sacrifice. The Scrooge McDuck ain't sitting here right now. I'm sweating my ass off. It was 105 degrees St. Florida. It was very hot, man. Oh, very hot. It was even, I was like, damn, it's hot today. And I like that. I like that. But uh, all right, that's my thoughts. Now let me take a hydration. I got to roll down my window sweating. And then we'll go all live comments, man. Taffy, good to see you too, man. Slowly, I didn't get to read the comment yet. Good to see everyone, man. Thank you for the comment. Guys, if you like these videos, they help you. Help you. Please take the effort to click the thumbs up button and share the video. Mini Van Murph, man. Thank you again for the super chat, brother. Does that mean something to me? It means something to me, man. Thank you. All right, guys, let me just take a hydration break. Love to everyone, man. Still hot. All right, let's see what we got tonight. Uh, Chad, hey, man, haven't seen you in a while, brother. It's good to hear you're still out there, man. You're still doing okay. Shout out to Chad. I believe another brother from Minnesota. Bro, the satisfaction of watching your show. Brother, I appreciate you, man. I'm glad you're doing all right. Uh, praying for your mental health and for your best life, brother. I love you, man. Carol, hey Carol, good to see. You. I believe my fellow Floridian or fellow fellow future Floridian. And Carol, what I can tell you is today was 105 degrees. It felt like the devil was jumping around in in, in uh, the sands of uh, Florida beaches. And what I can tell you is I saw my first shark today swimming in the Southeast Atlantic Ocean. I saw my very first shark, real shark, guys, within 10 feet of me. So I was just having, I was, the, the water was crystal clear, uh, like, uh, blue. And they had the green flags out on the lifeguard stations. That means great swimming conditions. And so like I always do, I tried to find a place away from the uh, masses and I went my own little spot on, in the ocean. And then all of a sudden I see like a bunch of younger kids with their camera, like they're following like the edge of the uh, water and they're coming towards me. I saw oh, these people going to bother me. And come to find out they were following a shark. And so like I start to back out the water because I hear him start to say the word shark. I say, nah, no way. So I didn't run out the water, but I start backing up. And then all of a sudden I see like the uh the the shark uh the thing on their head, like when they pop out of the water. I said, no way. And it wasn't huge, it wasn't a big great white, but it was it was a shark, it was a big shark. And then like I saw the shark swimming. And I never thought I would see one that close. And what I could tell you is I got the hell out of that water. But then I got back in. Why? Because it was 105 degrees. And I'm still sweating now because it's hot as hell down here, man. But I like it hot. Am I moving to New Jersey? Hell no. New Jersey was 80 degrees. That's too cold for me. Some people say, Sam, I want to go to New Jersey because it's 80 degrees. It's nice now. It is. That's why all the snowbirds are up there. I'm down here swimming in my own sweat. I'm Sam McScrooge. I'm not Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck was swimming in money. I'm swimming in sweat, guys. Big difference. All right. Let's stay positive. Good job. 
Uh, good to see you, Carol. Free to be me. Peace, Sam the man. Good to see you. Keep building, brother. Well, I appreciate you. Appreciate me. Thank you, man. Jalen, what's up? Finally caught you live. Jalen, good to have you back, man. Journey with George. That's my brother from Tennessee. I got to take another hydration break, guys, because I'm going to pass out if I don't. I love you. It's hot. Journey with Jordan. Society will be chaos if everyone started using Planet Fitness. That's true. For their morning shower option, keep the nomads in the 1%. Now, I agree. And don't worry about it because most people will not want to swim in their own pool of sweat and shower at Planet Fitness. Just like most people will not want to spend the summer in Florida. That's why don't worry about Florida being overcrowded. The world will never be that everybody wants to do the same thing. The masses will always want, in general terms, the same thing. But when it comes to reality, when it comes to the reality, what I could tell you is people do not want to live out of their car. They don't. Uh, they damn sure don't want to live in Florida in the summer. They damn sure don't want to live in New Jersey in the winter. Sacrifice is how you beat the system. Yes, there's exceptions. Yes, there's people who are born with a golden spoon in their mouth. But I don't look at someone who's rich as they necessarily beat the system. Because many rich people, they think because they're rich, they beat the system. Now, money's part of life. I speak very directly to that. But it's not the only part. You also want to have some compassion. You also want to add some value to society. And, and money's not the only thing that makes you tick. It's one of the things that makes you tick, but it's not the only thing, you know, uh, you know, there's emotion, you know, you see a girl in a bikini that got nothing to do with money. If anything, that could take money away from you. Um, you know, but just using your creative gifts, uh, you know, that inspires you, uh, the climate, the weather has nothing to do with money. Many times you can move to Florida and you can lose money. Why? Because sometimes the pay scale is a little bit lower. But guess what, guys? It can improve your quality of life, at least for me. So money is not the only part of the system. It's a major part, but not the only part. Good job. Uh, Mini Van Murph, thank you again, brother. Damn it, palm tree. Yeah, I was in the ocean today with a shark. Somebody give me a shark emoji. And I pray I never see that shark again. But it was pretty. I mean, it was a cute shark, but from afar, I wouldn't want to wrestle that shark. Uh, I wouldn't want to do it. Hope you had a great day, Sam. I know you did. Yeah, thank you, brother. I appreciate that, man. Jalen, you have to play the system, not be played. Good job, Jalen. I agree with that in general terms. A little fiery one. Schools should teach personal responsibility. They do, and to some extent, that's the uh, parents' job. But even if the parents taught it, even if the school system taught, taught it, you're always going to have a Cain and Abel. I grew up in a household uh, with uh, two other siblings. Uh, my parents had three kids. I was the youngest of three kids. We were brought up in the same house. We went to the same school system and we were taught basically the same things. Uh, two of my sisters, you know, they basically on government assistance, uh, strung out a little bit on drugs. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm not, and I'm not better than them. And they helped me in a lot of ways. But all I'm trying to say is the schools can teach whatever you want. Parents can teach whatever you want. But how your kids develop, and how they turn out is a little bit of an art form, not a science. So what the schools will never teach you is that jobs are, are just all about you functioning in a system. Okay. But if you're not careful, you're going to pick a job solely for the money. But I did too. Look, when I was offered an electrician job, I didn't take it because I wanted to work with my hands. I took it because I was going to double my salary. I was working at the CD store. At that time, I don't know what minimum wage was. I don't know, six dollars, something like that, an hour. And I was basically, they basically said, I, somebody, uh, my dad came back in my life, tried to make amends. And he said, I can get you a summer apprentice job working as an electrician. I said, I don't want to do that. And he goes, it starts at $12 an hour. I said, sign me up. Money's an incentive. If you're willing to work, I was willing to work. I hated it. I hated Every bit of the five years I did construction, I mean, I did construction for 10 years, really, because I did it for another five years after that. But I did five years of schooling and then five years of work and then another five years out in the field. I hated it. But I knew the system, okay? I looked at my choices. My choices were I can go to college, uh, I can go to DeVry, I can go to a technical school. Uh, I, could, I could just work in the workforce and try to, like, move up that way. But, I, you know, I know you need some type of education. Uh, some type of degree, some type of certification, because that's the way the system's structured. So I spent, what's the best certification I can get for my personality to make the most money? And then I can, I can position myself to do what I want. Even at the young age, I saw that. 
So I said, well, Sam, buckle up because it looks like your best option at this time is be an electrician. And I said, oh, shit, I hate doing that. But I said, oh, shit, it's going to put me in a better position later on in life. And that's what I did. Now, again, most people wouldn't be willing to do it. Most people wouldn't be willing to work in a ditch, have a foreman yell at them for, you know, 10 years and, you know, be a coffee boy and do all the different things I did. Hard physical labor. I hated it. But it was a means to the end. I saw myself eventually leaving that and trying other things. And that's what I did. I just tried some other things. I eventually found a niche. And even now I'm reinventing myself. I'm sacrificing. Again, 1% or less of society living in their car, especially not by choice. Why did I do it? To reposition my life, to live life on my terms. And if I ever exit the corporate world, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be able to beat the system as far as living a life on my terms, hopefully. Okay. But I'm not anti-corporation. Now, I think sometimes corporations hide under an entity and that hurts some of society because, again, corporations can collect up a bunch of debt and if it doesn't work out, they go bankrupt. You can go out there and take college loans out. You can't go bankrupt. Okay. Now, you can take some medical bills out and go bankrupt, but then you got to have some credit to go rent a house. When you go rent a house, they look at your credit. When you go buy a house, they look at your credit. They look at how you handle your money. To have a shelter other than living in your car, they, people want to know how do you handle money. They don't want to know about your grades in high school. They don't want to know that you have an engineering degree. They don't want to know that you are a construction worker. They don't care. They just want to know that you can pay the rent, that you have a track record of working with money. And if you don't have that, then you then you have to go to the other part of the system, the, the below average, the less than 10% doesn't mean you're less than anyone, but then you have to go to the government assistant method. Which means is the government takes a certain part of society and they subsidize their living, whether their shelter or their food, and they give them a monthly siphon. Again, I got family members on it. But when you're in that part of the system, you have to comply. If they tell you to go see a doctor, if you're on disability, you have to go see a doctor. You have to go see a psychiatrist. If they give you food stamps, you have to buy certain foods. Okay. So the system, you know, then you, you're, you're, you're in a sit now you could still beat the system. There are people on disability. They do side work. I'm not recommending you do it, but guys, look, corporations, they're, they're doing tax loopholes. So some of you, a lot of people that watch this, they're, you know, they're on disability guys. You could be on disability and clean houses okay, and do other things that I'm not going to say you should not claim it, but there's other things you could do under the table. I know, I know someone on disability, they're cleaning houses. You can clean two houses a day, get $200 a day. So don't tell me that there's no other way for you to do it. Now, now if you if you can't get out of bed, you can't do stuff like that, then you know that's a different part of life. But there's things to do within the system that you can get ahead. Okay. But you gotta put some effort. There's no system in the world. There's some people that look again, are born with a silver spoon in their mouth or whatever. I understand that. <laughs> Elon, man, I'm swimming in a pool of sweat, brother. Like I this ain't Scrooge McDuck, even though one day I'm gonna be Scrooge McDuck. And one day I may have a home base, guys, because I'll sweat my ass off, man. <laughs> I may have to get a home base eventually. Um, what was I saying? I don't know. I got to take a hydration break. It's hot as hell right now, man. I love you guys. Whew. Let me roll down this window, man. It's hot as hell. <laughs> All right, where we at? Um, little fire one, y'all love you. Vicky, Minnesota, Florida, Vicky. Vicky's moving from Minnesota, Florida. I love you, Vicky. Good to see you. What I could tell you is, you better get ready for 105 degree weather. But what I could tell you is, I still love it. Okay. Would I move from New Jersey to Florida again in a in a in a New York minute? Would I recommend you move to Minnesota, Florida? Yeah, I would. It's great. Okay. Now watch out for the sharks. But what I could tell you is, I'd rather run into a shark than go shopping at the biggest mall in the world because there's nothing else to do but being indoors. Guys. Don't get seduced when it's summertime and you're in Minnesota, New Jersey, and you think, oh, it's nice. It's 70, 80 degrees, guys. I want to sweat. I came here to sweat. And what I can tell you is, Vicky, you got the right tattoo. I'm going to get a Florida tattoo one day, maybe. And what I can tell you is I love Florida, and I love you, Vicky. Uh, or two, I hope I said the name right. My stuff from Portugal. Well, love to you. Thank you. Good to see you, Otto. Taffy, that's my guy. Good to see you, brother. This is some real world stuff. Thank you, brother. Schools don't teach this message to keep people in the system. You're very smart, brother. You get it. I always enjoy listening to these type of videos. Thank you, brother. 
Thinking outside the box. You got you got everything it takes, brother. You're a very smart guy. Love the topic tonight, Taffy. I love you, man. I appreciate you. You know I believe in you, man. You get it. You'll figure out life. Just keep doing you. Gina. Hey, Gina. What's up, brother? Say, hey, peace on the way. Hey, Gina. Good to see you, man. Love and respect. Good to see you, Gina. Gerald. Yeah, great topic tonight, brother. Gerald, thank you for all your love and support, brother. I appreciate you, man. You stay positive. Uh, Jeremy Madrid, Tennessee house. At Tony. D battery fan. <laughs> Still functioning electrical grid failure, guys. When it's 105 degrees now at night, it drops about 20 degrees. It's probably about 85 degrees right now, but with the humidity, it's still in the 90s. Guys, like people ask me, like, how do you stay cool? Guys, in the summer in Florida, you don't stay cool, man. You sweat your ass off, man. Okay? In the winter in New Jersey, guys, you don't stay warm, okay? You sacrifice. You want to beat the system? <laughs> Look at me. I'm beating the system. <laughs> so what I could tell you is, uh, most people don't want to beat the system. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with that. But just, it takes some sacrifice, guys. Good job. Free to be me. The system was built on slavery and must sustain on slavery. Dead is slavery to a certain extent, true, but not a whole 100% true. He who works as a slave eats like a king. You know, again, I don't want to say 100% true. To some extent, what you're saying is true. But the system is better than it was 100, 200 years ago. So that's the encouraging thing. Uh, and there's a lot of resources for everybody, for all walks of life, all different uh, groups. So really now, whoever you are, whatever walk of life, what you have to say is, all right, this is where the system is today. It's actually better in many instances than any other time in society. So let me operate in this system and then do what I need to do to survive and thrive. And that's it. Because you can't go backwards in life. You know, you, you, know, you just got to go forward. Uh, Dennis? The advantage used to belong to the employer. Then our society grew into 24-7, 365 workplace. Now the advantage is as ours, long as you accept that you can earn money 24-7 day, figure your budget. Well, I definitely agree with beating the system definitely requires you understanding your budget because more than ever, you are required to also be a level of an accountant. You don't have a guaranteed pension. You don't have annuities for the most part. And you don't have a, a job that you're going to keep for 30 years. The average person in today's society only keeps a job four and a half years. But here's why the system is better. I'd rather be born now than 30, 40 years ago and work construction for 30 years with a guaranteed pension, not do what I like, but there wasn't, there wasn't Ubers, there wasn't DoorDashes. Those aren't careers. But there's more opportunity to be creative. We're in a creative era. Now, for the masses, I think they may get hurt somewhat because the masses need a job they can keep for 30 years with a pension. But for everyone out there that can understand this, for me personally, I'd rather be in today's society than 30 years ago because I like my freedom. Okay, And I like to be able to do jobs on my terms, on my time. Now, I understand all, I've also been fortunate to kind of navigate through the system. And I think for the masses, they're hurt by the system is now very much based on you being independent in your mindset. Like back in the day, the system was kind of structured. So, you know, you're going to be a steel worker. You're going to retire a steel worker. You're going to get a great pension benefits. But I don't want to be a steel worker for 30 years. I don't even like the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I want to be down, you know, in Florida. So I'd rather be a remote IT worker with no pension and be able to do YouTube and other creative things to reposition my life and to build my life. So in many instances, today is still better than yesterday, but it's different. And you do, it all starts with you understanding that to thrive in a system, yes, you have to have a budget, you have to have cash flow, and you have to figure out, you know, a way to financially empower yourself. Good job, Dennis. 24 hours, not eight. Yeah, but I'd rather work, I'd rather be on call 24 hours in one sense than to just work. Uh, I, like I used to hate to punch into work and... Like, even if all the work is done, even if you do eight hours of work in six hours, you have to stay another two hours because you're, you're time clock bound. To me, I'm all about output. So give me the tasks that need to be done that are somewhat fair. I mean, you can't overload people. Give me the tasks that need to be done. Let me do them and that's it. Like, because, it, you know, it's like school. Like, if, if, a, if a teacher gives you an assignment, this part of the system, guys. If a teacher gives you an assignment and you finish it in 10 minutes, should you have to stay in the classroom for 45 minutes? No, but in the system you do. And in the old system in society, if you went into your job, even even, even in some jobs today, like if you go in Walmart and they tell you to sweep the floors and then you sweep them in two hours, but then you got another six hours, you got to stay there. 
So some jobs are still like that. But you should try to work your way up. I had to do that. I remember being on construction jobs and the foreman would come around and he would say, all right, I want you guys to run uh, ele electrical circuits from here to there. But this, guys, this is an all day job. Don't go finishing in an hour because we have to fill up the whole day. So he was basically saying, look, even if you guys pull this wire in an hour, you have to stay here all day. So don't get ahead of yourself. And that's part of the system of life. Uh, Gina, I'm going to hit the gym early. <laughs> I'm going to hit the gym after this. I got to take a shower, man. I'm being planned fitness shower all night. Uh, know that you started your day with something positive. Brother Gina, good to see you. And thank you, brother. Dennis, your hourly rate or goal should be figured on 24 hours, not eight. Again, I prefer salary, but it takes a while to get to salary. You have to build up the employee's trust. You have to have a track record. And you have to stay in the workforce over a period of time. Uh, but ultimately, when you know your budget, when you live below your means, and when you have positive cash flow, you have more options. And the best time to get a job is when you currently have a job. Uh, and so you can gradually reposition your life to own more of your life on your terms, and that's how you beat the system. You don't beat the system by hoping that anarchy occurs. That's how you become ignorant within the system. Like if you're waiting for the dollar to collapse and there to be anarchy, guys, guess what? The rich, powerful elite, you, you think like they're going to allow the system to collapse without them still controlling the system? There's always going to be a system. And even if the rich elite lose, guess what happens? Then we go back to barbaric days where the most, where the strongest and brutest dictator runs the world. So it doesn't matter like if you're back in the day when Caesar ran the world, if you're in a, brute, a brutal dictatorship, or if you're in a democracy, you know, controlled by money. Guys, there's always going to be a certain group of people that are running the system. And believe me, today's system, especially in America, is way better than 100, 200, 500 years ago. So be thankful, understand the system, and don't become subject to the system. Good job. Uh, Minnie Van Murph, thank you again. Your banker will never ask you for your school report card. Tattoo that on your forehead. Amen. Only your financial statement. You get it. Today, if you have a smartphone and an internet connection, there are many opportunities if you open to learn. Minnie Van Murph, you damn right. Good job. And that's why I do think there's many... Now, again... The things you can do with your phone, whether it's DoorDash, Uber, YouTube, whatever, again, many times they're low-paying jobs, but there's alternate ways of living, and you can still have a couple supplementals and still get ahead, okay? You have to put in the work and the time, but I'd rather that than be a steel worker for 30 years. So I still think the system is better, but I understand that for many people, they're getting left behind in the system because they're not adapting. Adapting, adapting, adapting is the number one thing you need to learn in any system. The number one book I would recommend to anyone is a book called Who Moved My Cheese by Dr. Spencer Johnson, I believe. It's a book, it's a small, simple book about basically the whole mission of life, no matter what system is, you have to learn to adapt. And that's why I do like how I reposition my life through uh, uh, living in my car is because it gave me the flexibility. Flexibility and adaptation go hand in hand. Now, eventually, I may balance my life out and put some stability because, look, guys, I'm sweating in a car. It's 105 degrees. All right, come on. So eventually, like, I may get some, some you know, stability where I'm not as flexible, but I have a little bit more stability and comfort, okay? But flexibility and adaptation for a season of your life is how you reposition your life. Never forget it. Uh, good job, uh, Mini Van Murph, Taffy. I've always questioned why I was being taught algebra, chemistry, geography, and even biology, but never all caps being taught true topics like taxes, you know, you need to learn, exchanging your infinite time for money, debt, savings, etc. Yes, because the first step in school is to see if you can operate in a system even if you don't fully understand it as far as or if you're frustrated by it. Because if you get frustrated by the school system and you totally rebel, you're not going to be able to play the system. You're not going to be able to beat the system. You don't beat the system by trying to make the system collapse. Many people have tried and failed. I know, I know a kid I went to high school with. He, he physically tried to burn the school down. He didn't beat the system. He, he got locked up. So what I could tell you, he, got, he was subject to the system. Now, once in a while... You're going to need to buck the system, okay? But what I want to tell you is most times you just need to play the system. Not in a malicious way, but in a way you say, you know what? Look, I don't need algebra. I don't need all this other stuff. But let me get my degree and do what I need to do so I can beat the system.
Because uh, you ain't going to burn down the school and beat the system. And that's the truth. Uh, Dennis, this is an amazing overview of the system. Thank you, man. Good job, Dennis. Damn it. Thank you, man. You're a very smart guy. Me, Van Murph, man. Thank you again. And, brother, all I can say is I appreciate uh, the, the tip. I appreciate the show of appreciation. Uh, and thank you for the positive words. Uh, great positive message, he says. Hope everyone is listening. Five stars, brother. Love to you and thank you. Jeremy Jordan. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up, guys. Thank you. Good job, hydration break. Well, damn it. Thank you, Jerry with Jordan. I got to take another one. It is high as hell right now, man. What's the temperature in Tennessee, brother? Whew. Whew. <laughs> Sweat my ass off, Taffy. Out of college, I got into an IT position. Good job. IT stands for information technology. And I'm making good money for my age, 27. Good job. I can play the system. Good job. That's why you've gotten ahead. Either professionally, showing interest in my position. Good job. Being a go-getter. Good job. And socially. Damn it, Taffy. That's why you're going to be able to beat the system. Good job. A uh, little fiery one. Making the system work for you. Good job. Not the other way around. Exactly, little fiery one. Make the system work for you. Good comment, Taffy. He continues. Showing interest in pop culture. There you go. And people normalize. Yep. But topics like this is where I'm um, turkey interested. I understand that. I rather have five friends that understand me on the same page on that. Keep your circle small. How this how how work, how to work the system work works. Burst a hundred that don't. I agree, guys. You're lucky if you're gonna have five good friends or less. How many people do have my cell phone now and I keep in touch with on a regular basis? I would say two to three people max, and I don't spend any physical time with them, but I talk to them on occasion. Guys, keep your circle small. Uh, you got, that's how you beat the system too. Good job. Free to be me. Emotional consumerism, love, marriage, kids. Yep. And none of those things are evil. And here's why I am not men going their own way. I remember in my thirties when I kind of said, I really don't want to do relationships, but I was still shooting for companionship. There's no such thing as companionship guys. You're just basically playing with fire. But the girl that I started seeing, I remember she had said to me, Sam, you're always serious. She, she goes, you also have to be a little, have a little bit of fun in life and you have to be a little bit emotional. You don't want to just be like basically too serious. And even though it ended in a disaster, I'm a fair-minded person. She was right. I look back and I say, she helped me in that way. Now she destroyed my life in other ways, but I'm a man. Okay. And a man takes accountability for his decision. He doesn't blame a woman. Okay. And so, and he, and he doesn't say, I'm, I'm going to be a man going my own way. You can say, look, you want to be single, but I still say that because of a woman, I have a better perspective on life and women have helped me, even if they've hurt me in other ways. And just like I'm sure I've hurt some. So what I'm saying is this perspective helped me. I'm not a bitter person on love. I think you can live without love as far as like relationship love or whatever. I think you can love yourself and have a loving heart without being in love. But I'm not a bitter man, and I'm not a cynical man, and, and I don't look down on uh, relationships or women. I don't, I don't want to do any, but I did them, and they've made me a better man, okay? And so what I could tell you is, uh, lights just went out in this parking lot. Let's keep reading. Uh, Taffy, rather talk about the Kardashians. I always to watch the Kardashians. Uh, buying a new car, new phone, new clothes. I've been there. Very real topic tonight. Well, thank you, brother. I've been in all those things too, so I can't judge. Taffy, yeah, how the system works. <gasps> Swan Auto, he's back. I saw that brother made a video yesterday talking about why he doesn't drink alcohol. Thank God he got rid of making videos about trashing his uh, transgender neighbor. Thank God, brother. The Lord saved you. I love you, brother. I'm pulling for you. You're a smart guy. Don't give up. And what I could tell you, let me start my car, guys. Uh, I love you, brother. Let me turn on my air conditioner too. I, I can't help it. it. It's hot as hell in this piece. I love you, Swan. Let's read what Swan got to say. But all Bob Wells needs to do is get excited is nature and someone's minivan to convert. I, I hear you, but I know you're laughing. But look, guys, Bob Wells is a capitalist, okay? Why is he a capitalist? And there's nothing wrong with being a capitalist. I'm a capitalist. Guys, Bob Wells created his own business. He, had a, he built his own website. He did a self-publishing book. And he's created a YouTube channel, which is a company. Now, he also has a nonprofit. But I know many people have nonprofits that they're they're a tax shelter. I'm not saying he's doing that. I'm just trying to say that Bob Wells is not someone who's living cheap. Okay, he lived cheap after he got a divorce, but that was just so he can heal and survive. And then to thrive, what he did was he turned into capitalism. 
he he capitalized off his situation. And he monetized his situation, literally. And there's nothing wrong with that. He provided a service to society. And he got rewarded for it. And rightfully so. And so, I think many people who watch his channel and many people who I've met... Uh, on YouTube, I think many people are, are either hoping for the system to collapse or they got bitter. Bob Wells was on disability, okay? So he didn't thrive. He survived on disability. He got a divorce. He, th and he, he got in like a motorcycle accident. He's got a scar in his thing. He was a campground host. He was working as a campground host. He got a motorcycle accident and he collected disability. So once, once he healed up, he didn't say, well, I'm going to be on disability the rest of my life and live, you know, in the woods. He said, well, let me see how else I can produce an income. Let me start a YouTube channel. Let me write a book because I need to make more money to, th to, to thrive. I can't just live cheap. He sells people living cheap and he did for a season of his life, but that's only to reposition your life to beat the system. Okay. And that's what he did. Bob Wells has beaten the system and it wasn't through living cheap. It was through living cheap for a season so he could reposition his life and then capitalize off it. Guys, come on, guys. You paying attention? Good job. Uh, Jeremy Jordan. Some people need to blow up swimming pool pumped full of free water from a river. I, I saw, hey, hey, Nomadic Fanatic is a capitalist, guys. He's making, he, he made a full-time career off YouTube. How did he start? He start off using his college loan debt to finance, to buy an RV, and he created a YouTube channel. And he lived the American dream. He he got a, a full-time job being a YouTube creator. And guys, all I can tell you is he beat the system. The less it takes to make you happy, the better you are. Yeah, he went from living in a beat-up RV. If you watch his be beginning videos, he was living in a beat-up RV to a van. Now he's in a Class A motorhome. Guys, he beat the system. And it wasn't through living cheap. It was through sacrificing and creating. You get rewarded through creating and offering a service to society, okay? Because Nomadic Fanatic videos have made him money. And money within the system has empowered him to live a better life. Got to respect it. Good job. Little fiery one. Your passion shows. Yeah, and so is this. And McDuck style. Yeah, sweat my ass off. Thank you. Tony, I would like to apologize to everyone in the chat room uh, for so many comments. Brother, just do you, man. all love. Sam is the best part of my day. Thank you, brother. Brother, you don't got to ask for forgiveness. We understand you and we love you, man. We appreciate you. Brandon. Hey, Sam. Today I delivered pizza to a chick in a bikini. Well, congratulations. At the swimming pool. It was amazing, brother. I ain't mad at that, man. Congratulations. Bikini emoji to you. Uh, don't fall in love, though. Be careful, man. It's an emotional buy. But I'm not mad at love. Elon. Hey, I always wanted to boondock. Seems fun. Hey, Elon, you still watching me? I'm sweating my ass off. I'm boondocking right now, okay? So what I can tell you is if you want to boondock, it's a lot different than Nomadic Fanatic, okay? Why? Because he's making videos to capitalize off. Guys, I'm making videos. Yeah, I want to capitalize off it, but I'm giving you a real deal here, guys, okay? And if you boondock, if you live in your car, okay, what I can tell you is you can sweat your ass off, okay? Now, uh, good luck with that, but I'm not mad at that. I'd do it. Mini Van Murph. No matter what we learn in school, everyone has a different life lesson to learn. Totally agree. I do my best to keep this in mind. Good job. As I encounter others. Good job. Do my best to be compassionate. Damn it, Mini Van Murphy. You're nailing it tonight. Good job. Eli. Looks warm in the car. Yeah, I'm boondocking. <laughs> Eli, just subscribed to you. Thank you. Danny, freezing in Colorado. Eh? Snowed in two foot. Well, I'll take 105 degrees, brother. Good to see you, Danny. Elon, isn't hard to sleep in the heat? Hell yeah, I'm boondocking. I'm sacrificing to beat the system. I have problems with the heat in my house. Oh, Elon, all I can tell you, brother, is... I've lived in a house with no air conditioning. And I said, well, hey, if I lived in a house with no air conditioning, I live in a car. But it's a little bit different when you're living in your car in a Walmart parking lot with no air conditioning versus your house. So just be mindful. Uh, Gina, I was in the water and saw a shark. I would literally run. Brother, you can tell you something. That shark scared a little bit. Me, uh, it scared me a little bit. It's my biggest fear. Well, brother, don't come to Florida then. I've been snorkeling the sea. Well, brother, <laughs> I was only waist deep. I wasn't even in deep. I was only up to my waist. That shark just came magically appearing, guys. It was pretty wild. Danny, interest rates are lowest they've been in 2,000 years. I agree. We're printing money. Inflation may go high. We may turn into Venezuela. We manipulate our currency more than China, more than Venezuela. Trump basically 
has bullied the Federal Reserve to keep the interest rates low. And I'm not meddling. Obama did it too a little bit to grow the economy with rocket fuel. So guys, if we hit super inflation, we're, gonna, we're no better than Venezuela. We're doing the same thing as Venezuela. We're controlling the money, the money flow. Now, we're not a total socialist company, but a socialist country. But guys, when you control how money's printed, the interest rates, etc., you're controlling government society. So, guys, we're not much different. Don't don't let people all pander to you. Jeremy with Jordan. It's 80 degrees in Tennessee right now. But was 92 early today. That's cold. It was very humid. We had a huge storm come through last night, knocked out the power in many areas the whole night. Damn. Wally, I made it to Indiana working my union electrician. Job. Good job, brother. In two weeks, I'm living in my Chevy Suburban. Well, brother, welcome to the swamp life, brother. I'm glad you're doing good. Indiana can't be that hot, though. Danny, you have to join the system to be able to leave it. Brother, good insight, Danny. All right, guys, thank God I'm done with the live comments because I'm sweating my ass off. I got to get the hell out of here. I love each and every one of you guys who left a comment. I love you, Mini Van Mur for a super chat. I love you guys who clicked the thumbs up. Guys, I tried to share every bit of my being without totally evaporating into the uh, moonlight. Because what I can tell you is I'm sweating my ass off. I got to go take a shower right now. I love you guys. There may be a season of your life where you have to sacrifice. Okay, I'm sacrificing. Why am I sacrificing? Because I want to beat the system. Not because I think the system's evil, but because I want to live my best life. Okay? I love you. I appreciate you. I want you to live your best life. Stay positive.